Hey guys, are you looking to edit your products in your big commerce store through CSV or through bulk edit? I say bulk edit because CSV is a form of bulk edit, but there is also a bulk edit tool in big commerce. And I think I have a different video for that, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you guys how to do it through CSV. And before we get started, my name is Cal. I'm a developer, a store owner, and I run the e-commerce growth community for store owners, just like you and me. And, uh, you know, I record more and more of these videos every week. I want to help you guys out. So if you find this one helpful, subscribe and hit the bell and you can see even more in the future. All right. Let me share my screen. Oh yeah. That's me. Cal Wiggins. Bam. Okay. Let me share my screen for reels, for realsies. And I'm going to show you guys where to start. So, you know, we're not talking about editing in the back end. Um, I do have a test product in here that I'll, you know, use to edit. And you'll see that here in just a minute, but just know that I have a test product set up. Now, if you've wiped all the products in your store and you don't have any products in your store, you know, set one up manually uh, using the products view just to make sure that you have at least one in there. Because I highly recommend everyone, if you're going to edit or add products through the CSV, you need a template of what it needs to look like coming out of it. So. You want to make sure that you have at least one product in there and then we're going to export that to the csv and that's going to be our starting point so click into products and then export and then it always has default selected and that's pretty much never what we want we actually want this bulk edit template and the reason that we want that is because that's the way that we're going to import it back in so choose bulk edit don't need to change anything else down here click continue now what everyone does at this point is they automatically click this without reading any of this stuff. And if you click this button right here, it actually says close and that's going to just close the modal. And then you're going to be left sitting here thinking, well, where's my export? And the thing is it didn't run because you told it to close. So don't click the close button, click this link here that says export my products to a CSV. And this is going to take just a couple seconds here on my store because it's really small. If you had 10,000 products in here, it might take a little bit. Um, next thing we need to do is click the download my products file and that'll download a CSV into your downloads folder or wherever your browser downloads things to. So this is good because now we can open this up and this is going to be our, you know, our boilerplate here to edit from. And so I'm going to go to my Google drive. If you are a Microsoft Excelian or whatever they call people that use Microsoft Excel, then you could import this CSV into there. Um, I don't have Microsoft Office, I use Google Drive, so I'm just going to drag it into my Google Drive and then open up the file so that it opens it up in Google Sheets. Um, let me just shrink my or hide my cost columns so that doesn't get in the way or distracting me during the video. But <clears throat> otherwise, um, you know, I hit my cost column, but everything else here is real data. And you can see that there are so many columns, so many columns, quite a few. Now the number of columns can vary. If you have a brand new store, you're going to have basically uh, enough product image columns for maybe one or two or three images. I forget how many there is by default. However, if you add more images to a single product, in your whole store, then it'll end up adding a lot more columns here to facilitate the extra images. So you can see here that my product images go up to 13 available images, you know, for every product, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, so you may have more or less columns depending on how many images you've loaded at some point. If you, you know, if you download this and you open it up, it only has a column for, you know, one or two images and you plan to load five and you want to do it through CSV. What you need to do is just go to any product in your store, add, you know, a full five images manually and then re-export it. And then you'll see all the extra columns here. So what I do next is I take this first column and I'm going to freeze it so that it becomes a sticky column. And now I can just scroll up and down and do whatever I need to do. Now, I'm just going to go over these products uh, at a high level and you can change whatever you need to change. And then we're going to make one change here on the test product and um, we'll do a re-import to show you guys how that works. So a couple of these columns uh, just need to be the same all the time. So this item type, 
I mean, it's always going to be product. What, what are you going to sell in your store that's not a product, right? Product ID. You never need to mess with this. If these are automatically assigned whenever you create a product in BigCommerce. Now, if you are adding more products uh, through the CSV, so you want them to be created when you do the import, don't assign a product ID to them. Just leave this blank for any new products. And then when BigCommerce goes through that line and sees that there's no product ID, it's automatically going to assign it the correct product ID. So if you put something in here and it hasn't been assigned by BigCommerce, then it's going to error, period. So if it's a new product, just have product ID blank. If it's an existing product, don't mess with whatever's in the product ID because that needs to stay the same all the time. Okay, moving on. Next one, product name. So this is where you can easily change the name of a product. Um, product type, this is always going to be P or I think D is the other version for a digital product or P for a physical product. So chances are, unless you're doing digital products, this is this should always be P. Uh, product code slash SKU is where your SKU goes. Bin picking is an optional field. This would be like you describing the bin location in your warehouse. So you don't have to have this filled in. Brand name is the brand name. And you can see that, you know, this is really easy. So, you know, if you have a bunch of products that don't have brand names, you know, maybe brand name is something that you assign using the CSV and you just do them all at once for 10,000 products. Super easy. Um, this right here, option set, isn't really used anymore because this was from you know, V2 UI and, and prior when you had like a, an actual option set that had a name and you could apply it through this. So you don't really need to use this anymore. Uh, always keep this one set to write. I've never, in 13 years, I've never set it to anything other than write. So I just always leave it exactly where it is. Product description. So this is a useful field. This is an HTML field where you can have like the full product description. And so People will get pretty fancy putting stuff in here, maybe use some concatenation formulas or something to, you know, to build out their product description. So this is probably something that you're most likely to edit. Uh, price, obviously important. Retail price, a lot of times people will do something like use a formula that says like, you know, equals this times 1.2 or something, right? Did I do that right? Yeah, there you go. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, something like that. So if you want to set all your retail prices through here, you can. Sale price would be something that overrides the price uh, temporarily. Um, you know, that is what it is. So we have a couple of different price fields here. Free shipping. This is for product level free shipping. And most of the time, people aren't going to be using this. They're going to be using free shipping rules in, you know, either a marketing promotion or in their uh, shipping zone as opposed to uh, product-based free shipping because this will override everything so if you have like free shipping in the US and you put free shipping on this product but then you allow an order to go through to Canada well you're free shipping that product to Canada Canada now as well so you know be be cautious in using this uh, the product warranty field so this has I forget how many characters but this is a pretty lengthy uh, chunk of space to use uh, in the product warranty Product weight, uh, width, height, depth, important for real-time shipping calculators. If you're not using real-time shipping calculators, that stuff's not required. You are required to have a weight in here, so you need to at least put something uh, if you're creating a new product through here. Allow purchase and product visible. This is probably going to be Y for yes on all of your products, unless you don't want it to be visible for some reason. But you can set that here. Uh, track inventory. So if you don't track inventory, I think that it says uh, none, right? And then it could also say by product or by option. And and again, if you uh, you know if you set up one product the way that you're going to do it, then this will uh, when you when you do the product export, it'll show up here how you want it to show and just kind of rinse and repeat on the rest of your product. So you can set current stock, you can set low stock, you can set the categories, and note that. Like this field, you can see that these uh, these products are all in the apparel category, whereas this product is actually in multiple categories. So you can see that they are uh, semicolon separated. So this product is in the campsite category, as well as the basics parking category, as well as exterior lights category. And so if you need it to be in multiple categories, you can do it just like that. Now, if you 
uh, if you do an import with a category that doesn't exist, BigCommerce will create that category when you do the import. So be sure to be accurate, otherwise you might end up with a lot of like weird misspelled categories or whatever mistake you made. All right, so the next section here is for product images, right? And so each product image has an ID, it has a file name, it has a description, and it has, is it a thumbnail or not? So this is, uh, oh yeah, an image sort. This is, um, you know, basically the radio button that says it's the thumbnail for product cards. So only one of your images per product should say yes. Um, this is your alt text for that image. Um, so if you're if you're trying to fix your alt text site wide, you could do it through a CSV and save yourself a ton of time. This is the product file name. So if you've uh, imported this already, then you'll see that it's got some relative URLs for wherever they decided to stick it. If you need to add images through the CSV, you can do that. And so you can put a you know a fully renderable URL in here, including the domain name, something that is an actual like hosted image at a domain name that can be viewed. And if you do that, when you run the import, BigCommerce is gonna to go to that location, it's going to get that image, it's going to upload it into BigCommerce, and then it's going to change the image URL to be whatever the relative link is in BigCommerce, which is a pretty smooth way of doing it. So uh, great way to import a whole bunch of images at once. And you know, like the product ID, BigCommerce is going to automatically assign this product image ID. So just don't ever mess with this. And if you're putting new images in, leave this blank and they're gonna assign a new one. So you have this uh, image one, file one, description one, thumbnail one, sort one, and then it hits two. So this is your second image. And then your third, and then your fourth, and then your fifth, and then your sixth, and, and, and et cetera, until you get all the way through the images and you uh, are no longer talking about images, it moves on to search keywords. So search keywords is when you are explicitly um, putting in additional keywords for the insight search. This is not for SEO. Well, not for external SEO. This is for, I guess, internal SEO. Um, so like if you wanted this to be found not only on the free key ring, but you know, also uh, maybe we wanted to say, uh, freaky ring in case people are spelling it phonetically right so it's supposed to be free f-r-e-e-k-e-y but maybe they're going to spell freaky ring or freaky ring with a space so you can put these explicit search words in there and then if people are typing it in or if they're typing in a misspelling then this will potentially come up in the big commerce search at the top uh, it's up to you if you want to use this um, but this is where you would put that stuff uh, globally Next is the page title. So this is your SEO meta title for the page. And you can do all that stuff here. Meta keywords, I don't recommend using, but this is if you want to put you know, keywords in on your products, you can. And then this is the meta description. This is the uh, description that you're suggesting to Google or whoever use that tell you know what uh, that page is about. So these three fields are not visible to the to the front end user but they are in the head so these are your seo fields um, these over here are for a couple different uh, myob things i've never used that because i've never used myob in 13 years uh, product condition probably going to be setting this to new unless you're selling you know vintage products or whatever um, show product condition just you know whatever these are by default all of these just you know, copy them down. Just use the same thing. That's what I recommend. Um, same with this, same with this. Now the UPC, maybe that's something that you want to enter. You can see I have some UPCs for stuff. And the product URL. So this is generally assigned automatically by Big Commerce, and they do a really good job picking out, you know, SEO friendly URLs. So I would just let them assign this, but if you wanted to edit it, then theoretically you could do that here redirect old url is if you are bringing products in from a from a different system and so this is your initial import and you're bringing in a whole bunch of stuff um, you can actually put the uh let's see maybe check the documentation but i believe the way it works is you put the url of 
the uh, the product page where it is right now on your other system. Maybe you're coming over from Magento or Shopify or WooCommerce or whatever. So you put the product page URL uh, wherever it's coming from, and then under redirect old URL, I think you put Y for yes. And what that's going to do is when you do this import, it's going to take that old URL. It's going to automatically create a 301 redirect from the old URL to the new URL, which it'll then assign and then put into the product URL field. So, you know, if you don't understand what that means, just know when you bring your site over from a different platform, you got to make sure that you don't break any URLs. And so if you're bringing over 10,000 products, that's 10,000 URLs that need to be rebuilt, right? Otherwise, you got 10,000 index pages that are all going to broken links. And so what's really cool about this is that their BigCommerce um, product import can automatically create all of your product 301s for you so that the old URLs get forwarded, nothing gets, nothing turns into a broken link. Great for SEO. Now, it doesn't do your categories, it doesn't do your pages, it doesn't do your blogs, all that stuff is manual, but you know, you can take care of so much of it through the product import right here, which is really, really cool. Um, all right, so these GPS is about, uh, these These are fields for uh, Google products. And so uh, if you're using the native integration, which I don't know anybody that actually does anymore, these are all fields that you could potentially use to connect to Google Shopping. Uh, and then over here, just tax provider and product custom fields. Now product custom fields is a big one for people, I'm gonna do a separate video showing you guys how to edit that. Um, but for now, let's just find my test product. So I'm gonna do a control find and choose test. Find the right one. There it is, test, test, right? So here's my product and let's do a couple of things. So let's do test, test. And we're gonna change the title to be test, test, pipe, just a test. And then let's actually put something in the product description and we're gonna say, this is only a test. So settle down. So remember this is an HTML field. So you wanna put like P tags around paragraphs, and all that stuff. And <clears throat> Let's just change the price to 109 too. So we're making three different changes. We're changing the title, we're changing the description, we're changing the price, and let's call it good. So that's the only change that I'm gonna make. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to click download and save as a CSV. I do usually recommend changing the title here so that it will change the title of what you downloaded just to make it super clear which one is which because when you when you start getting like you know five different csvs in your downloads folder and they're all kind of named the same um, it's a little bit easy to get uh, to cross your streams so we're going to go back into the back end of big commerce and go under products import and i'm going to just drag this file that i had downloaded into the choose file box you can also click choose file and find it on your uh you know on your computer and then we're going to do one more thing. We're going to choose this file was exported using bulk edit template. And this is automatically going to be checked by default. Go ahead and leave all the rest of this as default. And basically what this uh, line here is telling it is that, um, you know, we, we're, we're already going to have the right um, columns in place, right? So I'm going to click next. And you can see that it's automatically matched up item type with item type, product ID with product ID, SKU with SKU, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is all right. You don't have to worry about this. As long as you did product export when you, you know, for your starting file, and as long as you didn't mess with any of the columns, um, if you, you know, if you move columns around or if you change the column names, it's gonna make things crazy for you. So just don't ever do that. Just leave the columns as they are, just change the data within the columns. I'm going to click next, then start import. And it's going to upload this and it's going to update all of the products that it finds. And hopefully, theoretically, it should show that everything uh, that was imported got updated and that there wasn't any errors. If there was errors, uh, it would show right here. 
and um, I think that you can click there's a link here you know it's not shown to me because you know there wasn't any errors in this situation but there's a link here that you can click to see the dialogue of of what actually errored and then you can use that as clues to figure out what you did wrong so if you open it up and it says you know it couldn't find this product ID that means you put some product IDs in that you shouldn't have and doesn't know what to do with them and that's what's causing the error so you'll have to read the dialogue if there's errors to figure out what what you did wrong um, I'm going to go ahead and click view imported products which is basically going to take me to products view and you can already see right here that it applied my title change so it says test test pipe just to test now previously it just said just uh, previously it just said test test and we click into it you can see it changed the price to 109 like it did and it applied the to, uh, the description when the, previously there wasn't a description at all so that's how you do product editing through a CSV. I'll probably do a couple other videos showing some specific things like custom fields. So if you're looking for that, look out for that video. Um, that's how you do it in a nutshell. You have access to so much stuff in your products. Uh, it's a really, really nice feature. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. Be sure to join our free community at joinecommercegrowth.com. And if you need a developer, hit me up at epicdesignlabs.com and we'll see what we can do. Thanks so much. Oh, and be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys are struggling with and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.